Many Enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back. I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're all well. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Thank you to everyone that left comments and left me Christmas wishes. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully I've got round and given everyone a thumbs up or a heart just to say thank you and acknowledge that. I had a fantastic Christmas, but one thing that was bugging me over Christmas and I've been struggling to sleep, to be honest, with my OCD is that seal. So I wasn't happy leaving it where it was, things not quite aligning, and quite genuinely, I've been laying there at night thinking, how am I gonna sort this out? Am I gonna drill out the spot wells? Am I gonna put a slit in it? What about if I do this? What about if I do that? So today, we're out in the garage, we're gonna give it a go, and we're gonna get it all aligned properly, and rather than adjusting the door and get it all perfect. So before we get into that, I just wanted a quick story, so feel free to fast forward if you can. So one of my big Christmas presents this year was a new PC. So my old PC I have had since 2015, I built it in 2015, it's done all the editing for YouTube on there. So in excess of 500 videos have been edited on that PC, technology's moved on, I started filming in 1080p, I now film in 5K or 2K, uh, and the editing software I use is far more CPU hungry. So as time has gone on, it takes me longer and longer and longer to edit the videos to the point now where it's taken me probably three, four, five hours to edit and render a video. And if I, the rendering time alone can take up to about an hour and a half. So if I make a mistake, I lose an hour and a half and it can become really, really time consuming. So it means I spend more time indoors editing and less time in the garage and I wanna reverse that. So I've decided to put pretty much all my YouTube earnings for probably the last two and a half, three years into building myself a new PC. So um, the components alone, so I'm gonna build the PC myself, so it's not including monitor, keyboard, mouse, speakers, it is just the box, the PC box and the components inside of it. I spent just shy of £2,700 on that. I think it was 2650 I've ordered all the components from a company called Overclockers UK who are absolutely brilliant. They are a fantastic company. I've used them lot, lots of times before. And I paid for overnight delivery via DPD because it was just over a week until Christmas and I thought I wanna be on the safe side. I know it's probably gonna be delayed, but if I pay for overnight, even if it's delayed by two or three days, I should comfortably have everything well in advance of Christmas. So Overclock has done their part. I ordered all parts which were in stock purposely for that reason because I didn't want there to be any delays. They packaged them the same day and put them out for collection by a DPD the same day. Now. Considering it was overnight delivery, the first delay come in where they didn't collect it until the next day. But hey, do you know what? Half a day, a day, this time of year, you don't really mind. It was then collected by DPD and shipped down to my local depot, which is a mile and a half, two miles up the road. It then sat at that depot. It's now been sat at that depot for, I think, six or seven days. So I miss Christmas. It, it, uh, Christmas Eve, I was on the phone to DPD. I was messaging them. I was on the chat bot. I was pulling my hair out to try and make sure that all those bits turned up before Christmas. But unfortunately, they didn't. Um, so I was really, really disappointed. Now, DPD drivers, I'll take my hat off to you. I know how hard you work. But what's really disappointing as a company is when you pay for overnight delivery, I know it's going to be busy this year. I don't mind it being two days late, three days late, four days late. But when it is over a week late, something is really going wrong. And when it's been sat at the depot for a week, um, I think it's disgraceful because if they're that busy, don't take on any more orders. Anyway, hopefully, fingers crossed, by the time you're watching this video, my new PC components will have arrived and I'll be happily in getting it all built and configured but maybe it won't be. We will wait and see. But yeah, anyway, that was my Christmas. Luckily, my wife had the forethought to go out and buy me other Christmas presents as well. So don't feel sorry for me. I still had a wonderful Christmas. Lots of time with the family. Really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it's just the big Christmas present that I was really looking for, looking forward for, hasn't arrived as of today. But yeah, 
fingers crossed it'll be here by the time this video goes out. So anyway, let's uh, cut the waffle and get into sorting this sill out once and for all. Right, so I've had a, a couple of nights sleeping uh, and thinking about this sill and the alignment with that door and I'm not happy with it. Um, as I've sort of said before, I had the same problem with Project Sprout when I'd done it and I actually unpicked the spot welds, realigned the sill and put it back on, but I hadn't completely welded that sill in place at the time when I'd done it, so it was quite easy to do. And as the saying goes, you live and you learn. Unfortunately, I live, I learn, and then I forget. So when I've done this, I'm like, oh, why did I do that? I know I had that problem before. So the problem I've got now is <clears throat> I've obviously got lots and lots of spot welds on here. Like I say, I was getting eight or nine spot welds between these flutes. There's a good <clears throat> two, four, six, seven, seven there. And the problem really comes from the jacking point forwards. Same problem I had with Sprout. It tends to sort of kick inwards a bit and you need to sort of pull it out. And um, yeah, I'm sure as some people have put in the comments, you know, maybe you could have fitted the doorstep first and then lined it up. But like I say, you live and you learn. No one's perfect. We don't get it right all the time. So <clears throat> what I actually done by elongating those holes was to get the gap consistent down the bottom here. I mean, the gap looks huge at the moment, but it's pretty normal. There's no, um, there's no trims or anything on there, but the gap now is consistent down the bottom here, which I was reasonably happy with, and that's how I was going to leave it. However, when you look at this end of the door, you can now see we've got little or no gap down the bottom here, and the gap just gets wider and wider and wider and wider. So what I did do was you can adjust the striker plate down here, and that will allow the door to drop. And in fact, it's dropped a bit there, but when you drop it, then you get this coach line up here, not lining up. And what you also end up with is a, a bigger gap at the top of the door. So I think, um, let, me just, let me just put the door back to where it should be and you'll see more really what the problem is. Like I say, at the moment, the gap does look big there, but it's not, it's because there's no trims on it. So let me put the door back where it should be on that the front hinge. Right, so I've adjusted that approximately where it would have originally been on the door hinges. And as you can see, the gap looks very large. It's actually, if I look at the back of the door, we've got about a 20 mil gap at the back of the door, maybe slightly less, maybe 18, 19 right at the back. And if I come to the front of the door, we've got 24, 25 mil. So it's about five mil out. So this seal needs to come up by about five mil and probably out a little bit as well. So when you look at it that way, it's probably easier to see. It kicks in like that at the end. Now, two or three people said in the comments, and it's a thought I'd already had. So thanks for the people that suggested. And I think someone's already done this before. Um, uh, it's put a slit in the sill here get it back to where you need it and then weld the gap now i think what i'm going to do there is space down the bottom here so i think i'm going to put the slit down the bottom so that'll allow me to move it upwards and outwards this way so upwards that way and towards the camera this way by a few mil and uh hopefully it's not going to be pretty it'll be down the bottom here luckily so i say it's not going to be pretty um it's not nice having to cut up brand new panels but it is what it is we've got to get it put right the good bit is i do have a seal section now this is from a a near side seal however i can use I, well, I don't know whether i'll need to use metal out of this if it all goes wrong anyway i've got i've got a bit of seal i can use here um but like the art that the, say the the idea is, if you're looking at it, saying that's the front of the car, we're gonna put the slit along here, probably back as far as the jacking point. I'm not gonna time-lapse all of this, because it'll be boring. I think I'll just, um, I'll just give you progress updates as we go. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a slit down here. I'm gonna 
manipulate it a bit and see if we can get this gap consistent along the bottom of the door. Wish me luck. Right, so I've devised a way of doing this. All that I've got is my jack here. Um, and I'm just gonna use that to get the seal approximately where I want it. I might have to just, it's lifting the car up at the moment, so I might bounce the car a little bit, bear with me. Right, so after a bit of fettling, I think I've got that where I need it to now. So we've got pretty much, probably about a 19 mil gap at the back, and it's pretty consistent all the way along. Um, it does close up a bit about, uh, around the back here, but that's, I think that's more to do with the actual door itself. Um, I've put the trim back on just because it gives you a better idea. Um, and actually, if I look downwards now, um, the gap this way is consistent, which I'm pleased about. Um, yeah, and the gap between the seam of the seal and the bottom of the door is about right. Um, I've got to be a little bit careful because the door skin this side is completely shot. Um, obviously, I've got a new door skin for that. And no surprise, really, what that leaves me with down the bottom there is a a triangular shaped wedge down there which I now need to fill. So I now need to do a bit of cardboard aided design. I won't actually need to chop up that new bit of, or that spare bit of sill I've got. I think I'll just, uh, yeah, a bit of cardboard. I've got plenty of metal and I can just create a bit to go in there and weld it in. But I, th I think it's no surprise really that when you looked back at the last video, uh, and you could see the bit where I spot welding this on and there was that gap that just grew towards the end. Well, now that gap has just moved and it's about the same size. Maybe the slit here is slightly larger, but yeah. Um, so I think all the problem looking at what that slit's doing is this seal needed to come out more this way. Uh, it's welded too far in there. Um, <clears throat> So it's almost like from the jacking point onwards, uh, it needs to come out this way. And that is exactly the same problem I had on Sprout. And uh, I remember I remember doing it on Bruce as well. And I actually, I put some dents in the seal here where I was adjusting it. Um, but anyway, let me get the welder out. Um, get this bit welded in. And then I can draw a close on this little section. Um, I've decided to do it now before I do anything else here because I'll, I'll still be able to get to behind the panel just to whack a bit of spray uh, hammerite in there to protect it all. So, yeah, let me get that bit welded in. Right, so there's our thin sliver of metal sort of cut out. Um, obviously quite a difficult piece to shape. I just need to clean that off and... Uh, Weld it in now, back in a moment. Right, so there we go. We got our wedge shaped piece of metal in there. Obviously when you get to this end where it gets really, really narrow, um, it just acts more like a filler strip. Next thing we need to do is just go along, linish these welds back. And um, obviously then it'll have probably, depending how flat it is, it might have a light skimmer filler on there However, this bottom part of the seal is just covered in Gravitex, which is like that orange peel lumpy finish. And um, to be honest, it, I'd probably put a light skimmer filler on there, but because of where the weld is, you probably won't see that. So, um, yeah, let me limish that back off. We'll just do a last quick bit of measurements, but I think that has got the seal back to where it needs to be. Right. So it is done. I've put the trim back on, had a measure up, and yeah, gaps are much more consistent along the bottom there. Um, as I say, going on the original holes, aligning them in the middle of those holes, it's pretty spot on. Coach lines perfectly match up. Uh, door gap around here is fine. It closes up a little bit at the bottom, but it's where the hinges were originally, so it will have always been like that. Um, and even in the previous video, I was talking about the angle of the step here. Now you still get this situation where this is like a 90 
degree angle on the original part of the seal. This is over 90. It's just poor pressing. It's probably 100 degrees that. Um, however, now it's consistently 100 degrees all the way along to the end there, whereas before it was getting, you know, maybe 110, 120 degrees before the end. So although it's not sharp as a genuine panel, it is okay now. Um, our welds are underneath, we've linished them back. I say we, I, there's only me. Um, and where I actually have welded that piece of metal in, I, I kind of made it slightly indented. So a light skimmer filler over the top there will cover that up nicely, but even just with a quick linish off, that's not very visible. And the good bit is because I've still got the end of the seal open here, um, it allows me to get inside and um, and obviously uh, you can see the weld penetration through there. Obviously it allows me to go inside and cover that all in hammerite. So that is really, really good. So I'm pretty pleased with that. It's one of those jobs you finish it and you're, you're happy with it, but you're not 100% and you think, oh, you know, like I say, I slept on it for a couple of nights and I thought it's just bugging me. I need to go back and do it. So again, thanks to the subscribers who mentioned putting a slit in the sill. Like I say, I had already had that thought, but you know, thanks to your advice, it's useful advice. That's exactly what I've done here. So if you have this problem on your Mini, as I say, it's all to do with this front part of the sill. I've had it before. Um, I've just forgotten about it and forgot to do anything about it. It actually starts to go wrong at the jacking point. So it's like the seal. I don't, I, I don't, I've got, when you look at a mini actually, the seals, uh, whether it's just manufacturing error, I don't know, but the seals do tend to, if you put a straight edge, edge along them, they're not, they're not straight. They do bow out in the middle uh, around this jacking point. So it's just something to be careful of. The great bit about metal, and um, uh, you know, my friend Dave Jaguar, who runs Mini Mini uh, Classic Car Cave, I remember saying years and years ago, and he's exactly right. Metal is metal. It doesn't matter whether you're working on a couple of thousand pound classic Mini, or you're working on a you know classic Rolls Royce. Metal is metal. It's a lovely material to to work with. You can weld it, you can braze it, you can bend it, you can stretch it, you can shrink it, you can you can do all sorts of things to metal. It's especially mild steel. It's malleable. You can make it into the shapes you want to. And there's there's you know no limited amount of ways of getting yourself out of a pickle with metal. You, you, there's there's always a way you can get around it. You've just got to work with it, get familiar with it, and you can get some really good results. So I'm really pleased about that. I don't know how long this video is. I don't know whether it makes a full episode, but I'll add this bit in on the end, just in case it does. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the down the bottom if you want to know anything. Leave any words of encouragement, etc., etc. I do really appreciate it. And if you're not a subscriber, please do continue subscribing. Going into 2023, we're going to have lots and lots going on. This is really going to ramp up on the racing green. And I think in the next episode, we will be tackling this flitch panel in a wing on this side. I... Even though this skull is looks good, because the hinge panel, flitch panel has gone right at the top here, I think, unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut the corner off this skull. But what I might do, because it's the original skull, it's got the chassis number still stamped in it, I might clean up all the paint off the rest of the skull, see what it's like. If it's all good, I might cut this piece out, carefully drill out the spot welds, and weld it back in again. But I need to get behind there, get the closing panel out, so I can weld up the top here to get, I mean, it's, to be fair, it's, it's just this very top piece here. 
Maybe I can do that externally. I don't know. I'll have a think about it and uh, I'll catch up with you in the next video. Thanks for watching.